Hello friends, I hope you guys are doing well. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I do my henna for my hair when I have to do it. And I should have probably made this video a couple of years ago when you guys were asking this question a lot because I feel like I talked so much more about hair stuff back in the day. But every single time that I do henna my hair, I think about filming it and for whatever reason, I'm either tired or not in the mood. But today, oh, I'm like kicking things in the background. It's a mess as you can see, but this is okay. This is what I work in. Ah. And Sal's in the... Say hi, Sal. Hi, Sal. Bless this vlog by hi, Sal. saying hi, Sal. Hi, Sal. Again. Hi, Sal. Ah, yeah. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Um, so yes, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, every single time I henna my hair, I think about making a video for you guys and I just never do but today I was like there's no excuse I feel like making the video so here we are making a video so every two months or so I henna my roots because surprise I have white hairs now I'm getting old Sal doesn't even have white hairs and I have white hairs and you know it's kind of weird I, I never thought I would have white hair so soon in my life but you know here we are it's not too crazy and it doesn't show too much but it is there like when I zoom in I could see it and my hair looks very oily because it is <laughs> <laughs> yes because it is uh, and the reason for that is henna grips way better to oily and kind of dirty hair rather than clean hair I've hen up my hair a day after washing it and a couple of days after washing it and it just doesn't stick that well and so I usually don't wash it for about five days or so and then I will henna it and it just sticks nicely my hair gets super dark and I'm throwing everything in the oh okay that explains that's better um, kind of better but yeah so every couple of months I will do my roots and once every four to six months I will do my whole hair and it doesn't look like I mean I henna my hair black it doesn't look like it needs another layer of henna on top of it but I think that what henna does for me is a little bit more than just coloring my hair black it actually kind of coats my hair and makes it feel really protected and makes it feel thicker and heavier it does take forever to dry though so if that is an issue for you and you know if you don't want to be blow drying your hair for an hour um, it does make it harder to dry your hair like that's just one thing that I've been told by hairdressers who get really annoyed with how long it takes for my hair to dry but um, on the other side it just makes your hair feel so thick and luscious and protected and like for me it's it's more than just the color but also yes it makes it super black so right now my hair doesn't look like it could use henna because it already looks quite black but if you get close enough and shine the right kind of light it is kind of a different shade than black my natural hair color is like a dark brown with parts auburn in there and if i can find a picture i will pop it up with what my hair looks like when i don't do anything to it and let it get sun damage so that the color goes kind of closer to like a dark auburny thing i really like it but you know like everyone in the world i like what i don't naturally have which is raven black hair so i've always wanted to have super black hair i went blonde once and i'm glad you didn't know me back then because it was it was a bad look for me it just did not look good it made my skin tone look really orange and it was just it, it was a weird look I bleached it and then I tried to go blonde and this was like sometime in high school and it was terrible I will never do it again and so yeah ever since then um, a couple of years after I made that horrible mistake I started coloring my hair just black like blue black and I really liked how it looked and I just um, then for a couple of years I did nothing to my hair and that's if I find that picture, that's when the picture is from, from when I did nothing to my hair for years and that's kind of the color it goes after it gets sun damaged. And then I decided to, since my hair was like just like virgin hair, there was no color on it, no bleach, nothing, I was ready to commit to henna because once you henna your hair, it's nearly impossible to get it out of your hair. I don't really know anyone that has put the amount of henna that I put on my hair and has removed it without 
causing some kind of damage to their natural hair discoloring it burning it right off turning it into kind of a weird greenish blonde like some horrible stuff happens so if you want to commit to henna just keep in mind it could be a long-term thing or a forever thing unless you're willing to let it grow out so for example if i want to go a lighter color i would have to wait whatever many years it takes for all of this hair to grow out which could be about like what 12 years 10 12 years of hair growth and because the hair down here is quite old and then I would have to wait for that to grow out and then I can do something to my hair without risking damage. So once your hair touches henna, anything else is really like out of the question. You can't put really other kinds of henna on it. Um, to my understanding, you have to stick to the henna that you use just to be safe. If it's another brand of indigo or black henna, then I, I guess it's okay, but don't take my word for it. I just know that you cannot put bleach or hair color on top of hair that has been henna. I have actually tried it to my own hair and like what, the back of it before I was ready to trim a little bit of it off and I saw what it did. It was not pretty. My hair just looked like it had been a, kind of like burnt or melted off. I'm really committed to henna but I really like to mention that kind of little warning thing about it because you might watch this video and you know it, it sounds great. It's natural pretty much and for the most part I guess it's natural. It has way less chemicals and you're, it, just, it doesn't damage your hair. Like it's for me it's just made my hair better. It's I feel like it's improved the look and the feel of my hair over the years. Um, I've never had a bad reaction to it. The, the worst thing that has ever happened to me with henna is that I tried a brand and it just did not color my hair. That's kind of the worst thing that happened. So it's been good to me and this video might make a lot of people think that you know I'm just gonna go out there and buy henna and put it on my hair but keep in mind I don't know if you can put henna over bleached hair or colored hair. I've I had virgin hair before and then I put henna on it. So um, keep that keep all of that in mind. Do your research because henna seems very harmless but I don't know what it'll do if you put it over hair that's been treated. So just a little warning there but yeah so I'm gonna show you guys pretty much how I prepare my henna treatment it's pretty messy and the end result is my entire bathtub covered in like black dye so it's quite a mess it's uh, hours of work pretty much um, not work but it's hours of it being on my hair I keep henna on my hair for anywhere between three to six hours and sometimes I'll put it on sound though, sometimes I'll put it on and I'll just nap for like five hours and then I'll get up and wash it off and um, ideally I like to keep it for four hours and that's kind of what I'm trying to do today so I'm gonna go prepare my henna, wait for it to cool off because I have to boil the water, mix the henna in there until it's the right kind of texture that I like to work with and then apply it to my hair which is kind of messy honestly I'm not going to show you guys how I apply it because I'm going to be in the shower and it's going to be a mess our toilet is tiny there's no way I'm going to be able to film and show you guys what I'm doing so I'm just going to apply it to my hair make sure every strand is touching henna basically but I'll show you guys kind of the consistency I like to work with um, and what else? I'll try to keep it on for four hours and then yeah it's not really gonna look any different my hair is you know very black to begin with right now so it's just um, more I want to show you guys the process of how I do it and stuff like that so yes my hair is quite dirty five days of no washing there's a little bit of dry shampoo in there from last night so um, I'm gonna go boil some water and I'll show you guys the type of henna that I use so let's go do that okay Lucifer decided to come here and help me record so I'm gonna show you guys the two different brands of henna that I use while the water is boiling actually I'll stop that it's really loud okay I'm gonna show you guys the two different types of henna that I use if my camera decides to focus so I use two different types of henna and I've actually mixed both of them and it's totally fine for me at least um, and Lucifer is just being a little <laughs> she's just here being cute and needy can I film please can I just film and you can come say hi later okay come on so these are the two different types of henna brands that I use. One of them is the Amir's Black Henna. This is what it looks like. And this one is Nurani 
black henna and they are like the dupes of each other okay even like the packaging and the pose and everything looks similar so i don't know how different they are but um, as far as the ingredients go they are pretty similar to each other and i've as, again i've mixed both of them um, when i ran out of one of them and it's been totally fine they don't react bad with each other um, at least on my hair they've been totally fine and for me in vancouver i get them from some local east indian grocery stores they carry mostly they used to carry mostly this brand but i think this is a newer brand both of them are fine um but to be honest i've kind of had a hit or miss with both brands so i usually buy like 20 of these at once because i just want to do all my all my shopping at once and um some of them are lighter some of them are darker so the consistency is <laughs> sorry about my my cat is here so the consistency is not um 100 percent. so sometimes i don't know if it's when the powder is lighter or when the powder is darker but sometimes it just doesn't grip it could also be my fault for having washed my hair or like probably something i did wrong but um as far as like the consistency goes it's a little bit like sometimes it's darker sometimes it's lighter the powder so maybe it's the different suppliers i don't know but it's um that is a thing to mention so what i like to do is open up the boxes and in the blue one you get six of these little packets okay and so each one of these packets has a couple of other packets in there so what i like to do is just get these all opened at once because i'm not going to use just one of these for just my roots i usually do either the whole box or i do at least four or five of the packets so it's pretty much like the whole box for my entire hair i will absolutely use two boxes two to three boxes but i only have two left right now so i'm gonna just try and maybe make the henna paste uh, a little bit watery and just kind of work with that but it also creates the risk that it might not make it as dark but that's something I, i'm totally okay to live with i mean my hair as i said is quite black to begin with so i'm gonna go ahead and open all of these up the other one comes with i think also one two three six packets so it's all packaged the same way just one thing to one thing to mention as far as the grams go they're both also 60 grams so it's 10 grams per packet so you open the packet up okay it has like a like a plastic outer layer and inside of it there's another packet and on the side of it there's also like a little instruction thing and so i like to get all of these ready and when um i have all of them then i just take one by one and i dump it um, into a bowl and the reason for that is it can get really messy so you just kind of want to do it in as few steps as you can so kind of just get it all done at once um and once i get them in the bowl i will slowly add water and try to create kind of like a like a yogurt consistency you know it's not too solid but it's not too watery so you just have to it's kind of hard to explain but you just kind of have to play around with the amount of water you put in to get the right kind of consistency it doesn't hurt if it's a little bit thicker but um, it is kind of like a waste of product right you can add a little bit more water to it to an extent so i will do that and then when i have the paste ready i'll just kind of show you guys what it looks like it's really hard to kind of tell you what the consistency is but maybe i can show you what it looks like and then i'm gonna go apply it to my hair and wait for four hours and binge watch the crown so that's gonna be exciting
So we're getting closer to the consistency that I like for the henna. It kind of looks uh, like a perfect paste right now, but there are um, little pieces of still dry henna in there. So you do have to mix for quite a while before it's truly ready to put in your hair because if you don't break down those little kind of clumps of henna in there, um, it's actually going to fall off of your hair as soon as you put this on. So those dry pieces will just kind of come off from your hair and get everywhere. So just keep mixing until you don't see any of those kind of, you see the texture there? It looks like there's like little solid pieces in there. So you want to get rid of that and you want to make sure it's very, very smooth. So just keep mixing for... For a few minutes and something unique about these brands of henna that I use is that um, once you add the hot water the smell it's it smells like um, freshly cut grass it's got a very earthy very green smell it's it's good stuff I really like the smell it's not very strong but it is there so we're slowly getting ready to apply this but it's still very hot so I'm gonna let this you can see kind of steam coming off of it but I'm gonna let this cool down for a little bit and then obviously you know test it out before you put it on your scalp it's it's probably really hot still and it's gonna take a little bit of time for it to cool down you can apply it um, when it's you know still warm um, it doesn't have to be warm but you just kind of want to let it sit until it's comfortable on your skin and yeah another thing to mention actually I'll go to I'll go to my face. One more important thing I should mention is when you're applying henna, you're gonna really want to use your hands to get the henna in there and make sure it's all over your head. Um, but make sure that you wear gloves. Henna is incredibly pigmented. Like it looks like a brown poo poo paste, but um, once it develops on your skin or your clothing, it will turn it jet black. So, and it's, it's amazing at you know leaving marks on your skin so I have a little bit of henna going on right here once I wash this off this is gonna be black for probably like a day or so so be careful with it make sure you don't get any of it on your face or your body or your clothing um, unless you don't mind having some marks for a few days the drier your skin is the better the henna will stick to it so what I like to do is um, I like to use Nivea or Vaseline anything that's thick and heavy and make sure that you cover this part of your face you cover your ears with it and then the back of your neck anywhere that the henna might touch so and when you finish applying the henna just put your hair up I like to actually cover my whole head with um, plastic bags and that just keeps it from falling off when it gets dry so as the henna dries it will start kind of flaking off from your hair so you don't want to have you know henna everywhere okay so this is what it's supposed to look like when you finished henna -ing and putting up your hair so I think this is kind of for me the best shape to work with I just bring it up to a bun and this is what it looks like before it dries and so you like in the next hour or two what's gonna happen is it's just gonna dry on my hair and some parts of it will flake off so because of that I'm gonna cover this whole thing with um, plastic bags and I'm just gonna be like that for four hours fabulous and then I'm just going to wipe this area off there's currently um, Nivea all over my face and ears a hot mess guys and yeah and then we just wash it off and um, I suggest cleaning up your bathroom or your tub or whatever your shower as soon as possible because the longer this will stay the longer this stays the more it'll stain your bathroom so it is quite a mess like I have it's not a it's not pretty it's it's pretty messy it's a lot of commitment but um, yeah just a little another warning um, it's just gonna make your bathroom like really messy so yeah I'm gonna go cover this and uh, binge watch something for four hours bye the next morning hello again friends and welcome to the other part of this video so this is the next day I woke up a few hours ago 
and last night I washed my hair after about four hours a little bit under four hours because I was getting really tired um, it was very heavy it, it's quite a lot of hair and when you add like that much extra weight to it I was just kind of sitting there for four hours and my neck was hurting so if you can kind of put it a little bit lower down I would suggest doing that but for me I feel like when I put my hair lower and it has all the henna on it um, it just goes everywhere so I kind of like put it up and keep it out of the way and yeah as usual the bathtub is an absolute mess I have to go and put some bleach and clean it up I did a little bit of cleaning last night so things don't dry on the surface of the bathroom because then it really dyes it and it's kind of impossible to get the henna off of it and other than that it was okay I mean as you guys can see it doesn't look that different it looks a little bit shinier black um, it looks freshly henna -ed. I went to sleep this is close to the real texture of my hair when I don't straighten it it's not as curly but um, this happens when I go to bed with wet hair so this is kind of the disaster I have to deal with the next day but if I do dry my hair like let it air dry and then go to bed it will not look as dry and crazy but this is kind of what we're dealing with today so yeah this is what it looks like um, not that different but uh, from my perspective I can see it's covered the tiny little bit of whites that I have and um, yeah I mean that's fun but the overall um, texture Lucifer she's playing with my she loves the these sponges um, she's ruined a couple of them wanna say hi? wanna come say hi to YouTube? hi YouTube she's such a good girl today she smells so good oh, she's so beautiful go see the pigeons um, yeah so the overall texture of the hair feels a little bit thicker a little bit healthier but it's really hard to see with this kind of um poofy texture so what I'm gonna do is go and straighten my hair I will check back with you guys before this video ends and if you have any questions definitely leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to look at them and see if I can answer any of your questions that haven't already been covered here another thing I should note uh, my hair has not had a trim in almost a year because of the pandemic um, the last time I had a trim was I think it was right before christmas if i'm not mistaken so kind of about the same time maybe like 11 months ago or so um yeah close to a year so it's quite long it's yeah it, it's getting crazy it's getting there so yeah it's been almost a year since i trimmed my hair it could definitely use a trim but when it comes to my hair i really have to kind of research the place i go to before i go i have kind of like a weird anxiety with getting my hair trimmed because um, I didn't think I would really care much about hair but you know it becomes a part of you it becomes a part of your body and a and in a way a part of your identity I guess if you let it and almost a decade ago I had my hair um, the longest it's ever been and this was right after I visited Iran and I came back and my hair was extremely long and I thought I wanted to get a little bit of a trim so that it just it went past my butt cheek and I just kind of wanted to come up to my lower back so we're talking about like this much length right and I went to a place I just I it was kind of like a impulse thing I went to just a random little hairdressing place and in a sketchy little mall I did not do my research I didn't even think that this was gonna happen but the woman ended up like screwing up my hair severely screwing up my hair and I think she was overwhelmed with the length of the hair and um, I was saying I was very um, I was not outspoken at all and I was just gonna mention right before, do you see how my couch got destroyed this used to be like my favorite thing in the house it's just now it's all like scratches from Luna mostly Luna likes to scratch it but anyway um, yeah so I let her do my hair and uh, she she knew exactly what I wanted. I told her that I want the same shape. It's a very normal like U shape I'm not asking for any special cuts. Just bring it up a little bit trim it basically. It's not that hard and I could see her getting more and more frustrated during the like Like 30 something 40 minutes or even less probably that she was doing my hair I can't even remember like I blocked it out. It was so 
you know, for, for that time it was kind of a traumatizing experience because I was so nervous but I wasn't saying anything and um, she was getting more and more frustrated because I think what she did was she trimmed it um, asymmetrically so she kept trying to fix the other side to make it look like this side and she kept messing it up so I basically told her to bring my hair to my um, right like at my lower lower back right before the butt cheek okay how else can I explain it and she brought my hair all the way up to like about here and I'm talking like all around there's pictures of me from that era and my hair was like not short like it, for, for many people that's considered long but it was like more than half the length of it was gone because I just couldn't bring myself up to being like stop touching me like you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing and I know it and because of that nowadays um, even if I'm looking at really pricey bougie salons I still have to read a little bit more about it before I go in and I want to make sure the person doing my hair touching my hair understands what I'm telling them because I've had a lot of bad experiences and actually to be fully honest with you guys the very last time that I had a hair trim again um, It was much shorter than what I wanted like much shorter I showed one example of what I wanted for the front of the hair and I, I guess she just took it for the whole hair Like I wanted the front of it to be a little bit more layered as I said I like it when my hair frames my face but I guess her understanding was if the front is gonna be a bit shorter all of it has to be a bit shorter and again, I for the first time in almost a decade, I stepped out of a salon um, feeling like a little bit, not a little bit, really uneasy because that's not what I was going in for. And maybe a lot of you guys will be like, oh, well, that just makes no sense. It's just hair. It's going to grow back. It takes years for it to grow back. And it's easy to say if you don't have such a connection to your hair like a lot of people might understand it's almost like a spiritual connect connection to your hair it's almost like it's it's not almost it is a part of your body and it's not like your eyebrows or your nails or it's it's something that has been with me for years you know what i mean and um as much as i'd like to style it and stuff uh, if you guys know me i've kept it long pretty much my whole adult life at least and um if I'm going into a place trusting somebody to just give it a trim, I'm not asking for like a hard thing. So yeah, um, ever since that first experience, I've been going to much better places. So every time I step out of there, I'm not spending dollars. I'm spending over a hundred bucks getting a hair trim, you know, it, and it's a trim. Like I'm not asking for any styling. It's literally just make it shorter so that it looks healthier and it is healthier because as much as I like to keep my hair long, um, I don't want it to be that long like I don't I don't want it to be extremely long it is it is extremely long but I don't want it to be going down to my knees I'm not trying to have the longest hair in the world like that's not the whole point for me in my opinion your hair looks great until a point right so it depends on everyone's hair for me this is kind of the longest I like to have it before it gets a bit too much so I'm due for another trim pretty soon and usually the trims I get are like this much right they're not that crazy but the last one was a little bit much it took probably eight months seven months for it to get to the length that I intended for it to be at you know what I mean like it took that long for it to get to the length that was initially supposed to be you know the length does that make any sense so I'm supposed to get it trimmed twice a year that's ideally you know but then with the rate that people have been cutting my hair um, it seems like I can only get it trimmed like once every two years because I think some people just get a little bit too excited and I get it like some people who work with hair maybe they see a lot of hair and they're like I want to try something but yeah it's the moment that I feel for me personally the moment that I feel like um, the person that I'm trusting my hair with doesn't really listen to me that's that's it I'm not gonna give them a second chance like I respect them and, and I, I respect what they do but for me personally I'm not gonna put myself through that crap again so so 
I and I again I'm so disappointed in myself because I was so polite um, this was before COVID so I gave her a hug and I said thank you for your work and I left the salon my very last trim um, kind of telling myself it'll be okay but then everything felt off I felt like a cat with no whiskers just like falling over it was it was everything felt off you know what I mean and I was very bummed out for weeks like that's that's stupid but that's you know I have bigger problems but I do have an anxiety when it comes to that you know so so now I have to find another place and I have to have the conversation again with someone and just be like okay so I really I'm, and I do it in the nicest way possible I don't want to make somebody feel like I'm putting them on the spot but I, I think people that do hair really need to listen a little bit more carefully to people who are very specific with their hair do you know what I mean um, again I'm not asking for a, a very specific style I'm just just trim it the amount I asked okay stop trimming more and like stop you know like if if I'm like this this looks okay just just let it be you don't have to keep cutting like it's just it's terrifying okay so this video I guess has been a big rant about my hair experience but um, it is hair at the end of the day whatever but if I can avoid if I can avoid that extra anxiety for myself you know I will try I am less scared going and getting like medical procedures done sometimes than I am having my hair trimmed I'm less nervous for that you know like actually actually like speaking of medical things I have these two ear piercings here this is my vlog I'm gonna talk about everything um I have these two piercings here on my cartilage uh, the top one um has started to create like um I don't know if it's a keloid or it's a scar tissue it's something is behind it like it's very bumpy I don't know if I can show you guys but it's kind of gross not gross it's just it's a piece of the flesh itself it's not there's nothing coming out of it it doesn't burn um, it sometimes gets really red and irritated but there's basically I guess like a keloid or something and I have to get called by a surgical place in the next couple of days for them to surgically remove it um, and send it to have it tested, make sure it's not an infection, make sure it's not something just growing there because I told my doctor that I noticed it getting bigger and he's like, okay then, I'm gonna send you to a special place. So I'm gonna get called to have a minor tiny little surgery and that scares me way less than getting my hair trimmed. That's dumb, but that is just how it is. So anyway, do any of you guys feel that way? Whether your hair is long, short, anything, like, do you guys feel a little bit nervous when you go get your hair done, or is that just me? I don't know. But I will keep you guys updated the next time I go get a hair trim, but I'm going to go and straighten my hair, and um, I will be back to finish this video. This has been a long one, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. But um, yeah, I'm glad I did this video because now I, I get to talk to you guys about the other stuff about hair that I've experienced. This has been fun. I'm gonna go straighten my hair. Okay, so I finished straightening my hair and this is what it looks like at the very end. I just uh, used a little bit of um, Olaplex bonding oil and... This is it. This is the length. I really had to put the camera at a weird angle to show you guys the length, but I, it's not really doing enough. I have to still go a little bit higher. So yeah, this is currently the length of it. And it's, yeah, it's getting there. It's a little bit, a little bit too long for my taste. But yes, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the, um, the little stories and you know my whole hair journey <laughs> but yes I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section for me and hopefully I can answer you guys and sorry about the lighting it's a little bit off in here but this is the only place I could find with a blank background that I could possibly show you guys like this the hair situation so yes Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for joining me and stay safe. Bye.